Very excited. I can already see some of the lights. All right, here we go. Oh, man. Oh, the reveal. Oh, that's crazy. Hello and welcome to our next Overkill Gaming PC build. So USAA reached out and wanted to sponsor a video on not one, but three PC builds for the big three military service academies. Today we are tackling the Army West Point system. I mean, seriously, check this thing out. It took a lot of time and energy to get right, and here's how we did it. But how are we gonna actually make this O11 Mini look like a proper Army West Point system? Well, so we're going to be taking a lot of inspiration from actually the design and architecture of West Point. Which itself. looks like a castle. It does. It's basically built like a fortress. The aesthetic that we're going for is something strong. West Point has a lot of that stone architecture with, you know, a little bit of detail around the top and that copper roofing. The big challenge going into the system really is going to be making sure that the aesthetic is on point. I mean, if you look at West Point, it really does look like a fortress. There are hundreds of years of history in this place. So I want to make sure that we actually can do something that will do it really justice. But uh, that's not the easiest thing to do when you're building a gaming PC. So for the components, we're going with about as high end as we can get at the moment. So on the CPU side, for this system, we are going Intel. So this is the Core i9-10900K. We also have an RTX 3090 from MSI. Now, we will be water cooling this system. However, the main snag has been that we actually don't have our hands on a block for this RTX 3090 yet. Now, one thing I definitely want to call out is the WD Black AN1500 SSD. Now, this is not something we would typically use, right? The, our motherboard has plenty of slots for like an M2 SSD, we can load it up. However, one of the very specific things that the West Point team asked was to have a lot of space. So some of the actual things that will be running on this, specifically one of their simulations, is like three and a half terabytes. Should we start uh, tearing the chassis down and seeing like kind of like what it's gonna look like? So one of the cool parts about all of the Lee and Lee systems is they tend to be fairly modular. Yes. Which means that at least when it comes to modifying things or mounting stuff, it's not a crazy ton of work to get there. But I think we can actually dress up the glass a little bit. So one okay. of the cool design elements of West Point is they have these giant like arching windows that are placed into their stone architecture. So what I was thinking is either engraving or maybe even custom black vinyl oh. going on the inside there. So it's almost like a silhouette of the window shape. So yeah. you're kind of looking through these windows to the system inside. Okay, that will be cool. Walk me through the piles of pavers. So these are literally, are these like meant for like models or something? Yeah, they're actually uh, mostly meant for dollhouses. Uh, that's at least how they're advertised. Are you trying to tell me you were building a gaming PC for the army no, using dollhouse components? No, I'm building a gaming dollhouse for West Point. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Do you know how heavy that's gonna be? What happens when this whole piece of glass just comes flying down because it weighs 100 pounds? You think that this is gonna weigh 100 pounds? It will weigh 15 pounds. Pick all that up. Oh, it's super light. Oh, okay. Dollhouse, I get it. All right, let's build a PC. Hopefully, it comes out good. I'm going to be taking all of these little tiny pavers, and we are going to begin covering the whole front of this to make a little brick wall. You want a sample of what it's going to look like? It's an exclusive. But right here, we've done the test layout for the brick wall. You can see I keep it under my sandbags. That way it doesn't go anywhere. I've measured out the size here on the cardboard that this front panel is. So you can imagine, you know, kind of tiling them across like that. So it is time to get some actual PC building done. Woohoo, look at that. Now that, that actually looks pretty cool. So this is of course the Z490, specifically the tough variant, which I, again, mostly think it looks cool, but also should give a solid performance. So we did opt to go for the full ATX layout of the system. Now, there are a couple of other configurations that we could have gone for with this, specifically when it comes to the slots, you can do three, five, or seven slots in the back. Now, that would have given us more room, and to be fair, we'll have to measure to see what the actual clearance for the fans is gonna look like, but because the only things really installing in the PCI slots are the graphics card, and it's gonna be the actual SSD, we're gonna have all of this space here, so we can easily add fans to the bottom, and it shouldn't really cause us any issues. All right, well, I think we can actually just start getting to build. We may not have some of our components, but at least we can start test fitting things and seeing the rough run of where the water cooling components will live when we receive them. 
Okay, so we have our motherboard, CPU, RAM, as well as SSD, at least temporarily installed. Now there's one interesting thing about the O11 Mini, and that while it will fit an ATX board, it actually doesn't technically fit it, because if you look on the side, it actually overhangs. So what essentially is gonna happen here is that we're actually gonna run our cables behind the motherboard. So it is missing a couple of screws, which honestly should be fine even with the 3090. But essentially our cables are actually gonna come out behind the board, and we'll just wrap them around here. And so Why does it say one terabyte? We ordered the four terabyte version of this, right? It says one terabyte on the box too. Did I order? Look at that. So you ordered the four terabyte SSD and they gave us the one terabyte. Great. Nothing like when we have no time to finish a build and components are not showing up and are showing up incorrectly. So you, Eagle Eye viewer, probably noticed the one terabyte logo on the SSD that we opened. However, after staring at it and all of us in the office playing with it for multiple moments of, of time, no one noticed it. Um, so that's great. We can still do a quick test fit, but we gotta get this shit back and get the replacement ASAP. Hello. We are making progress. Good, I have some good news. Oh, is that our side panel? This is our side panel. Oh, yo, that looks really cool. Dude, check that out, isn't that sick? That looks so cool. So we've got our USAA, we've got the logo as well as duty, honor country, and 1802 is when West Point was built? Was founded, built, yes, somewhere in there. It's a very important date. The fact that we can now laser etch these side panels takes these builds up to another level. This side panel looks sick. Like, it just looks amazing. Like, it is nice and in your face, and I think it's going to be super well complemented by the framing of the stonework around it. I'm just crazy excited to get started on the stonework. Now, of course, this project is sponsored by our friends over at USAA. Now, if you don't know, USAA is a member-owned financial services company that offers insurance products for the military community and their eligible family members. They also sponsor the athletic departments of the three military academies that we're building PCs for. Now, I have family in the military, and a lot of them do rely on USAA every single day, so if you're interested, definitely be sure to check them out at the link in the video description. All right, how is the Army USA build looking, my friends? It is looking very good. So we haven't made a crazy amount of progress. It's just a lot of prep work to get us situated for doing our water cooling run later. It's a lot of the little things like getting our power supply in, mm -hmm. running all the power. But I'm taking the approach of actually going neat from the start as opposed to what we normally do, which is just kind of <laughs> plug everything in check everything and then do the cable management later. I wanna see about doing it this way, mainly because this already looks very clean. Yeah. And I wanna continue that streak. So in a build like this that is slightly smaller form factor, size matters. It always matters, Ken. It always matters. So what I found was this CPU block that also acts as a reservoir. So it's an all-in-one setup, so we don't need to have another tank here. Um, it is actually just as space saving as you can get. This is actually made for really small form factor like mini ITX builds that won't have any space for a reservoir. We do have a little bit a here, little bit, yeah. but I wanna use this free space to give us a little leeway for our water cooling run. And then tomorrow, we'll actually do the real thing. The real thing. The real thing. All right, we are making good progress on the build. So today, Ken was able to do some more of the cable management, so we now have all three of our eight pens for the 3090 plugged in. We also ran a couple of LL120s on the bottom. So we had a long discussion about how we wanted to do the airflow. One of the issues we're gonna have here is actually the uh, amount of cooling that we're gonna get out the top. We could build it in a manner that would give us a little bit of airflow, but honestly, it's not gonna be a lot. So realistically, we're just gonna go ahead and seal up the top. Sealing up the top, honestly, makes my job a lot easier. Not only do I not have to implement any sort of riser there to let airflow come in or out of the top, but the top roofing detail can actually be right up against, or at least very close to the stonework on the side panel and the front. I hope that doesn't become so hot that all of my adhesive starts melting, uh, but you know, that, that that's not really my department, so you can just kind of pass that off. When doing these custom PC builds, we're finding that a lot of the times with aesthetics, we need to compromise somewhere. So what we're doing is we have a rear fan as an intake, and then we have our radiator out the back that will spit all of the hot air out of the system, which I think should be fine. Hopefully, we'll see. All right, now let's fire up the system 
and hope that everything works because I will tell you what, if our processor, but specifically if that graphics card is not 100% functional right now, we are in deep trouble. Um, we probably should have waited, or we shouldn't have waited. Uh, I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm sure it'll be fine. Why would, why stress when you can just pretend everything's fine and uh, it'll work out just fine. All right, so we've got ourselves all 32 gigs of our Corsair memory showing up. Uh, obviously one fan connected and then we've got our 10900K, everything seems to be fine. So, okay, cool. I feel good at this point that we can shut the system down, tear it apart because we need to pull out the motherboard and start on our water cooling. The wonderful thing about the way we're doing water cooling in this army build is that it's actually not that complicated. Our CPU block that is also our pump and reservoir from Barrow actually does a lot of the legwork both in footprint and it makes our run pretty simple. I mean, there's still gonna be some weirder tubing runs with this, especially with how big our GPU is. I mean, obviously we'll see with water cooling and especially with how newbie we are with this, it can be a little hit or miss and we're always learning stuff along the way, but I think it should be fine. Walk in. Look at these guys. All right, guys. This is the uh, the moment we've been waiting for. Very excited. I can already see some of the lights. All right, here we go. Let me not mess this up. Oh, ho, ho, ho. that's crazy. Yeah, I feel like I'm in my barracks building right now. Oh man, this is great. It's yellow now. Yeah, black and gold. Can we pop this thing open? Open the. If you want, I don't know how. <laughs> Thirty-two gigs of RAM, four terabyte SSD, and a 3090. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Everyone's excited about the 3090. Austin, honestly, been a really big fan for a long time, and to see this come to fruition is just absolutely unreal. The fact is that this PC represents not only like what we are as a club, but the history of West Point and the people that stand behind us as well. So we really appreciate being able to embody all of that support. You know, it really is a piece of work, a, a piece of art, <laughs> a work of art it's for a sure. Piece of work. So thank you. It is so cool to be able to build a game PC for the future leaders of the military. I'm so grateful for all the work that you guys do that hopefully this is one small token of thank you and you're able to get many good years of gaming out of it. Now, of course, this army build was the first of three USAA builds that we're doing. And I'm really happy we started with this one because I think that we have some crazy, crazy ideas coming up too. And I'm super excited to work out all of the challenges and interesting, unique designs that Wes has because uh, you know that they're gonna be crazy because Wes is crazy.